Hi everyone, my name is Lauren. I did my honors thesis on the cocktail party problem in marmosets at the Cortical Systems and Behavior Lab with Dr. Corey Miller. So first today I want to tell you a little bit about what the cocktail party problem actually is. It's basically a variety of auditory inputs with one preferred sound among them. Most animals are able to solve the cocktail party problem, so to speak, meaning that they can single out that one preferred sound and attend solely to it. So from previous research, we already know a bit about how animals go about solving the cocktail party problem. For example, frogs use bottom-up processing, which is purely driven by the auditory stimuli. Frogs and other animals that use bottom-up processing are unable to solve the cocktail party problem if the overlap of those auditory inputs becomes too high. Humans, on the other hand, use top-down processing, which uses higher-level cognitive processes. Unlike frogs, humans are still able to solve the cocktail party problem even with a high level of acoustic overlap. So from this, our overall research question was, how does the common marmoset solve the cocktail party problem? The more specific hypothesis we wanted to explore was, do marmosets use higher level top-down processing to solve the cocktail party problem? So how do we put this study together? We exposed marmosets to a simulated social environment using recorded virtual marmoset calls, or VMs. There were two types of VMs that we used, distractors, which are VMs communicating with one another, and targets, which are VMs communicating with the subject. And we have five different experimental conditions, all of which were completed by each of our six marmoset subjects. The first is fixed 50, in which 50% of VM calls overlapped with one another, Second is fixed 75, in which 75% of VM calls overlapped with one another. And third is fixed 100, in which 100% of VM calls overlapped with one another. Fourth is target baseline, in which only the target VM called, no distractors. And fifth is silence, in which there is no sound played whatsoever in order to get a baseline. Also, it's important to note here that the target, in, the target VM in all conditions had adjusted response timings based on the subject response timing, but the distractor VM's response timings are fixed and have nothing to do with the subject. So the target is intuitive that distractors are not. So now on to our results. Our results showed that conditions with greater acoustic overlap being fixed 75 and 100 have similar response rates regardless of the target's response delay. And in conditions with less overlapped, that would be fixed 50 and target baseline, there is a negative relationship between target response delay and subject response rate. This means that the longer the target response delay is, the less likely the subject is to respond. So what do these results mean? Basically, it means that there are significant effects of both condition and target response delay on subject response time. And this indicates that there is an effect of our, of our treatment the VM calls, and the subjects are probably not just responding randomly. Also, we can see from this data that it is difficult, but not impossible, for marmosets to solve the cocktail party problem, even with very high levels of acoustic overlap. If you recall, this is consistent with finding in, findings in humans, which use top-down processing, but not in frogs, which use bottom-up processing. So, this evidence supports our hypothesis that marmosets use top-down processing. I hope you found this interesting and maybe learned something new about this fascinating area of research. Thank you so much for listening.